Your Excellency, Dr. William Ruto, the President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces, and my longtime friend, Your Excellency, Rigati Gashagwa, the Deputy President, a good man and a honest man. My, Your Excellency, Musali Abudavadi, our Prime Cabinet Secretary, Your Excellency, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Moses Wetangula and a long-serving Minister for Foreign Affairs, Cabinet colleagues, Excellencies and Ambassadors present, Governors, the leadership of the Parliament, all members of Parliament present, friends, book lovers, and my good friends from the Fourth Estate. Good evening. Your Excellency, thank you again and all of you for honoring this invitation to come and assist me in launching this book for the record. It has been in the works for about three years. It was conceived during one of my lowest moments, the day I was abruptly fired as the leader of majority party in the National Assembly in June of 2020. At that time, I was upset at the betrayal angry at the backstabbing, and I just wanted to breathe, and I had to process it all. Then a few weeks later, a friend sent me a package. It had books, the room where it happened, by the White House memoir by a man called John Bolt Bolton, a former U.S. National Security Advisor. I read it closely and it clarified my thoughts. It confirmed that I had a story to tell. Now that I think back, I was a majority leader for just half of my political life. I owe it to the future leaders to speak about those early years of their life. Your Excellency, when I spoke to another friend about writing books, he went to the bookshop and brought me a book titled The Deep State, The Fall of the Constitution and the Emergency of a Shadow Government by a renowned New York uh, Times writer. I then called my researcher friend and we sat down for hours taking and drinking many cups of tea, cups of spiced tea, Your Excellency. You know you have taken that tea in my house. Chatting about this book. I think he, he read the pain, the regret, and the anger in my voice as I retold the major episodes of my life. He gave me an idea that I should call it not personal. As he left, he gave me a book entitled For the Record by the former British Prime Minister, David Cameron. And when I told another friend about the book idea, he said, nothing personal doesn't sound good. It sounded vengeful. This, marked my life, this made my life and my remarks easier. I called the book for the record because I worked in a house of records and I wanted to put everything on the record. Anyway, after three years in the works, this book is here, ready for launch. Today, Your Excellency, is a special day. I am so happy to be standing here to lift the veil about the country's politics and its leadership. Distinguished colleagues, guests, and book lovers. For those who have not read the book, I will not want to spoil it for you, but perhaps I'll just tell you that it is the story of my life, my earliest memo memories. As a young man in Garissa, you know before the, the CBC, the competence-based curriculum, I used to sit with my mom every night. All my siblings did. She did not go to school, 
but she used to check our homework after it was marked. She knew which questions I had answered incorrectly, and she taught me something which I apply to my family today. Also check that people know what they are doing and that they are doing it correctly. For instance, I don't speak French, but I harass my children when I see a cross or an X on their French homework. Those who have worked with me know that I seek to understand everything. Now you know where it all came from. And yes, my colleagues, and most of my cabinet colleagues sitting here, and my boss, Your Excellency, Mr. President, and your deputy, you too have stories. And if we suffered a few years ago, is there anything to go by? You owe Kenyans books. I know that right now you are very busy, but when you get the time, please pay, uh, pen down your memos. Switching gears now, let me tell you that this is a book about politics, about power, about leadership, and about public policy. I write about how I got started in politics. I have worked very closely with all the key leaders in Kenya, the late President Mwai Kibaki, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga, former President Uhuru Kenyatta, and now with the current President, my boss and friend, Dr. William Ruto. I speak about the courage and loyalty in friendship as ex exemplified by my boss here. We have suffered together. We have thrived together. Mr. President is now leading us to, uh, to transform this country. We have a lot of work to do, and I hope this book will alter those who are keen to sabotage our agenda or derail our progress, that we are all working for the people of Kenya. If we win, Kenya wins. There's also a chapter about legislative leadership. My colleagues from the parliamentary leadership sitting here, former Speaker J.B. Muturi and our current Attorney General, the current Speaker Moses Watangula, Papa Waroma, my cabinet colleagues, and former majority leaders in the Senate, Kidure Kindiki, who also became at one time our Deputy Speaker, and Kipchumba Murkomen, the current CS for Transport. They all know how hard it was to set up a bicameral parliament, the tension between the two houses, and how we got to balance. I also tell the story of devolution as a chapter, and the tension between the Council of Governors and everyone else, including the executive and the, and the two houses of parliament. My friend Isaac Ruto, Mr. Speaker, was to be here today. I invited him. He's on his way coming because he's very central in this book. He was part and the parcel of the struggle. He helped us pin together the URP constitution. Many nights we sat with him at the family biblica along State House Road. And of course, the famous Ilepesa Bado in a letter Shida Ata Hapa Ukimuliza Mwishimiwa Rigiji. Still, the Senate, the National Assembly, and the county governors are still grappling with the same issue of Ilepesa. But we are working on it, baking a bigger cake to make sure that we have enough for the counties and the counties make enough to sustain themselves. It's not easy, but we are on course. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am sure many people do not know what we had to go through to pass laws. My opposition colleagues, the Honorable John Bandy, the Honorable Opio Wandai, were to be with me here today, but because of the political in hygiene in our country, they asked me to pass their message and that they cannot be here and they have sent their apologies. But they know the secrets and I have shared those in the book so that future leaders know how to apply the game to win for the people of Kenya. Sometimes we have to push through necessary laws 
to make sure we kept our country safe, to make our economy friendly for domestic and foreign investment, and to make sure Kenya got the best deal. The record speaks for itself. Whenever there was legislative overreach, the other arms of government, such as the judiciary and the executive, did their job. It's the beauty of our constitution. As a leader of majority in the National Assembly, you do a lot of work. You are the leader of government business. And at the same time, you're also a parliamentarian with a constituency. You have to know how to work with the cabinet secretaries, with the fellow MPs, and with the public. You automatically become the face of parliament. Do you guys remember when those activists and civil society fellows brought bloody pigs to parliament buildings and labeled the names of leaders, myself, the late uh, Jacoyo Medio, the late Francis Nyenze, and many others. We have seen it all. I've had people attacking some of us who were in the last government for approving the debt ceiling under the Jubilee administration. The borrowing came from good place. We wanted to invest as we baked a bigger cake. But instead, people minted the money, changed the scope of the projects, and began diverting attention when we complain about the wanton corruption in the last five years of the previous administration. But seriously, how do you build a railway that ends in a thicket? Move business from Mombasa, a thriving, a thriving port in East Africa, to a bush. I know they say, build and they will come. But you don't need to kill the economy in one corner of the country for it to grow in another corner. Our development has to be inclusive, and I think we ought to have done better with the taxpayers' money. Thankfully, President Ruto corrected that policy mistake immediately he took over and took the port business back to Mombasa. There are many more that we are correcting, and we believe we will fix the economy and make it work for everyone. On the debt matter, we decided, because we are in a hole, we will not stop, we will, we will stop digging. And as the president and his deputy have said many times, we have everything to make sure that we cut down on the borrowing, raise more funds, and rebuild our economy for the benefit of everyone. It will be painful in the beginning. As a businessman, as a Kenyan, and as a leader, I can tell you that we need to fix the economy now. We have to find money to pay the debts and grow our economy. And we, cannot, we can no longer borrow from Peter to pay Paul. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Musali Mudavadi, is here. He appears in one of my important chapters. He knows the story of 2013. He bought a copy of my book a few days ago. I did not tell him the inside story of the Madimoni scandal. He has his version to tell us one day. But for the first time, he gets to hear my side of the story. Maybe Honorable Musalia, when he gets the chance to speak today, he will tell us his side of the story of the Madimoni scandal. Honorable Musalia Mudavadi is a very tough man, a brilliant economist. I tell everyone that Musalia's speech, known as the earthquake, was brilliant. He diagnosed Kenya's economic problem very well. He knew the, situ the situation, and now together we are working to re uh, re remedy that. When Musalia said to Sidanganyane, I felt it. He spoke his truth, many truths, and the truth of 50 million Kenyans. I put that on record too, and I hope he'll get the time to also put it on record. And his speech appears in my book. Your Excellency and distinguished ladies and gentlemen, there's a whole chapter on how we told disbelieving Kenyans that the cases of the ICC were political international conspiracy. Winning those cases was a master 
class in politics and in geopolitics. You just have to read the book to understand what the current president and the former president had to go. What we had to do to tell our friends and many, many friends internationally and locally that we knew their schemes and we were never going to deliver, their schemes are not going to deliver justice to the post-election violence victims in our country. But a book like this must have a very candid chapter, Mr. President. I have written a chapter on my ouster in 22 minutes. My ouster took 22 minutes at KICC. I served for seven and a half years, and it all came crashing in less than half an hour. Can you believe it? What could this book be without the inside story of the handshake and the suffering method out to my colleagues and Kenyans in the dying days of the Jubilee administration? You see, sometimes we think it's all politics. However, politics can get too costly. It affects the life of really people. We can be mature about it, play our politics progressively, putting public interest first. I have done it in my constituency for the last 16 years, and my development record got me elected four times in four elections in four different political parties. I just hope that putting this on the record for the record will help us and give us lessons to politicians. There is more at stake. They need to work for the people who elected them into office. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished book lovers, as I conclude, let me recap that if this book inspires any hustler to pray to God, to work hard, and strive to succeed, then my job is done. I dedicated this book to my mother, a woman of courage, for teaching me all the values and to the young people of this country, for all the hopes and the hot fires that you lit under our seats. I hope young people, and more so even in my house, and I think all I can speak for them when I say that as a government, we hear you. We will do everything we can under the leadership of our president to make sure you achieve your dreams. I also have a word to all the young leaders in Kenya who are excited about being in public office. Deliver what you promise. You have the next four years to do your job. If you don't, I am sorry, your opponent will have you for dinner. It's really a matter of planning. I hope my book helps you, will help you uh, get more political lessons. Finally, I want to thank you all for coming. I don't take it for granted that you brave the traffic to be here for this launch. I'll be signing copies after the event. There are more books being sold out there. Grab one for yourself and more for your friends. You can still get the book from my website, www.adendwale.com or from Nuria Bookshop, Prestige Bookshop, Yaya Bookstop, Kibanga Books, and many others. Your Excellency, and under my conclusion, let me pay tribute to men and friends who sit here, who played the ultimate role in a very difficult journey. The Honorable Minister for Interior, Professor Kindiki, he appears in my book at one page or one chapter as a brilliant constitutional lawyer who spent with us many days and nights at The Hague. And on another chapters, he appears as a leader of majority who became a victim of the deep state and the systems. And just because we happen to be your friend, when we didn't choose to be a friend, we all found ourselves in the space of politics. The Honorable Kipchumba Murkomen,
the honorable Cecil Mbarire, the honorable Aaron Choriot, your excellency, who you remember, he came to the house through a by-election. And I remember there was a Kericho by-election and a Malindi by-election. When in one of my chapters, I received a 411, where myself and Honorable Kipchumba Murkomen and others were implicated in a certain uh, issues. Issues. So that chapter, I don't want to read for you that chapter. And that chapter, Your Excellency, is called You Have Touched a Life Wire in my book. Your Excellency, the, speaker of the, national, the former Speaker of the National Assembly, J.B. Muturi, has a lot of uh, uh, places in my book. Advice he gave to the former president when our colleagues in the Senate were replaced and now the knife was coming uh, for, for those of us. And of all, I, the day that uh, there was changes in the National Assembly, you actually the only person I felt for was the Honorable Cecil Mbarire, the governor of Embu now. I said they should have left this lady alone. Those of us, when we go home, we can, we can still survive. Your Excellency, our great deputy president, a man of serious words, and today somebody told me, the only other politician we expect to write a book like yours is Rigiji. <laughs> He's a man of the truth. So we expect Honorable Rigathi. Our two brothers, Your Excellency, Honorable Musali Amudavadi and Honorable Moses Watangula, the earthquake, the conference that we went to Bomas, and the speech he gave, and the leaders who ran away when they saw you, is well documented, Your Excellency, in, the, in this book. Your Excellency, your speech at both Bomas 1 and Bomas 2 is well documented. In, and, and when I look at that speech you gave, the first bombers, Your Excellency, at least we were there, myself and Honorable Kipchumba spoke. But in the second bombers, because we were no longer part of their club, you are the only one who was there. And we felt for you as we watched from the TV screens that what will they do to this man? But God gave you the courage and the patience, and you took a lot of time. I drew a lot of lessons from your patience. They were heckling you, and you could say, so is it? You think so? You know, words like, you think so? If you can convince me, I am, I am ready to, to listen to you, you know, very calmly, you know? They humiliated you, so there's a huge chapter on that, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, my journey with you uh, in ODM in 2005, and for record, the only time in my political journey with the president, and he allowed me a sabbatical leave, agreed, was during the 2010 Constitution. And I told him, Your Excellency, you know that few key areas that are dear to the community and the region I come from. The card is caught. And today when I look back, I am so proud that even during that referendum where the former prime minister, the former president, the former vice president, the whole government was on one side and you on, one, on the other side, you managed to get behind you over 2.5 million Kenyans who agreed with you. And Your Excellency, as I finish, he went to Mandera to go and preach the No campaign. And the President went to Ramu. And the Ramu constituency was where the chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on the Constitution, the Honorable Abdikadir, was coming from. So he went one week earlier, and he talked to the elders. In the north, you talk to people under the acacia tree. 
So in every town, there's one acacia tree that all meetings are held. So we went there. After two weeks, we went to Mandera. We went to the same acacia tree. And when the meeting started, I don't want to go into the issues the elders have raised. When the meeting started and the prayers were conducted, an old nomadic elder stood up from the back of the crowd with his bakora and he said, before you start, and you know we are with serious people, the late Honorable Haji, who was the Minister for Defense, the Honorable George Saitoti, the Kalonzo Musioka, and he said, gentlemen, wait a minute, before you start your meeting, William Ruto was here under this Acacia tree. He raised three fundamental issues, I won't say them, You'll find them in the book because uh, I don't want to offend people. And he says, unless you answer those three questions, which he said is in this constitution, you will not start your meeting. And, you know, we pleaded, please listen to us, listen to us. He now mobilized other few elders. And he said, William Ruto's questions must be answered. And you can imagine, we left that place without uh, answering any, any, any uh, talking to the people. When the, in the 2005, finally, there was a referendum of the banana and the, and the orange. And that time I was a young member of parliament. And uh, the iron lady of then, and the powerful minister for constitutional affairs, you'll find in my book called Mother Karua, and George Saitoti, and uh, Kalonzo Musioka and many others went to Garissa. And by then, that region was completely against the Constitution because there was extrajudicial killing. There were many issues. So they were not allowed to address a rally in Garissa. Unfortunately, with all her arrogance, and it's in my book, Mother Karua stood and called a press conference and she, because she was so powerful, she told the minister, Saitoti and the local administration, that you guys, you can come to Garissa, have a cup of tea, not address the people. You mean you can't even convince and talk to these refugees? A whole region, in her opinion, was inhabited by refugees. Your Excellency, I want to thank you for coming. I have many things to say, but I want to sell my book. I want money. And Your Excellency, you are forward alone yesterday in the standard. By evening, I have sold 400 copies. Today, by you gracing this occasion, I think we have surpassed 600 copies so far. Please buy my book. The proceeds will go to charity in honor of my late mother because she deserves a lot. And Your Excellency, uh, I, on the onset, I want to thank uh, the editorial team. You will not find an error in my book. I want to thank and applaud the editorial team that helped me put this book together, the legal team that made sure the people I have described in this book will not go and take me to litigation and did the copyright, and finally, uh, the bookstores who have, in the last 10 days, helped me sell my book. Your Excellency, finally, I want to thank most sincerely the diplomatic corps. The Dean of the African Ambassadors is here. The EU Ambassador is here. The French Ambassador is here. The Turkey Ambassador is here. The Saudi Ambassador is here. Representative of the British Ambassador is here. The Swiss Ambassador is here. And, and the, the UAE representative is here, and many, many, uh, the Moroccan ambassador is here. I really want to thank the 
diplomatic uh, community. I want to thank my colleagues, members of parliament who are here. Uh, David Ocheng is here. He has, uh, I have a lot of stories in my book about David Ocheng. The chairman of the pastoralist parliamentary group is here. Our cabinet colleagues are here. Senior government officials are here. Religious leaders are here. Defense attaches at the back I'm seeing from our, 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 our foreign uh, uh, government space based in Nairobi. You actually see that my story. Thank you very much. Please buy my book, help me sell, and I hope the president has committed to me. When I showed him this book, he looked at me and he said, what? And you know where we were? We were 33,000 above sea level. <laughs> we were heading to Kampala. So I just came to his cabin and I said, Your Excellency, this is the book I wrote. He looked at me and laughed and said, welcome, Honorable <laughs> Isaac Ruto. Please clap for Isaac Ruto. <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellency, and I'll now... Uh, uh, the mic and maybe give uh, about two, three minutes to very few of my colleagues who must we share this journey together. Thank you very much.